Happy Monday. Happy Monday. What's going on there, Chris Machete? What's happening over there, man? Hey, buddy. I'm just hanging out, watching uh, a little bit of the Leaf game. Hold Maybe on. We better, let's just go right to it. Here we go. Do Stand it. by. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice. very award winning segment, Nerds on Ice. What do you got, Chris? Give us the I rundown. Give us the score. What's going on right now? Well, grab some Wonder Bread, my friend, because I'm spreading the news. So the <laughs> Leafs so far, the Leafs so far this year, man, so they suck. They are not playing well at all. I know I called Johnny Tavares to lead in goals or lead in points. But, lead in uh, points. Yep. Um, he just had a great shift. Which is awesome, but he, I don't think, you know, if, if you're, I think if you're going to point the fingers at anybody, you got to look at fancy pants there, Mitch Marner. The guy's just been an epic fail this year. And basically in the playoffs, he's an epic fail when the pressure's on, when, when he really needs to earn that $10 million that he had to have, he just seems to choke. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, Chris, I saw you, I heard you played hockey when you were a kid. You weren't, you weren't amazing like Wayne Gretzky. No, but I'll tell you what, if you get me a time machine. And mm-hmm. give me $10 million a year, I will figure out how to play and make the NHL. Oh, but um, Mitch Marners. I, you know what I they think... call him out here? You know what they call him out here? What? That's what they call him out here. What do you mean? The cat's attacking me. I'm getting attacked <laughs> by a cat. That, what they, <laughs> does that what they call me? I want. They call him. <laughs> oh, that's what they call Mitch, Mitch Marner. Marner. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, pants. They call him whiny pants out here. I was the biggest fan of Mitch yeah. Marner until he, he did that whole, you know, asked for all that money, which he had, he had a really good opportunity to be a rad guy. And I'm, you know, the guys just drop a million bucks. Is it really that big of a deal? You know, I I don't, I don't think it, I don't think it's that hard of a deal when you're making that much money. Um, I guess you lose sight of things though, when you're raised that way, right? Like, you know, um, so I was mentioned about bunting, how he had uh, a little, little, he had to work for things a little more when he was younger and it shows on his on ice ethic. And that's just something us old schoolers, um, you know, I'm always going to stick by that. If you're going to work hard during your life, it's going to show when you eventually get paid. And uh, I think that Mitch is missing a little bit of that hard work. He's a little scared right now. But he oh, looks, looks like he's figure do, skating. Do, 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 do. Like, it, like do honestly. Have, well, I don't know. I mean, are they the people are trying to blame it on, on coaching and stuff like that. But yeah. what's really going on there? I, I well, I th- actually, I think the I think the coaching has a big deal to do with it because I think I think that the. the uh, the guys in their early twenties are leading the team that are making all the money, and uh, I think their coach is just a buddy. Uh, the, you know what I mean? Like, I think he's just—they he, need somebody older in there who's actually done something. Bring back Mike Babcock, huh? No, don't bring back Mike. Please don't bring back Mike Babcock. Is, isn't like Bruce Boudreau uh, available? These guys wouldn't perform under him. This guy—he's like a big cranky pants. I don't know. But that—but that's I what know. I mean. That—but that's yeah. what they need is somebody. But he can do it proper. Like you know, he handled Ovechkin. Um, up to a point there, I guess, but I am, um, I don't know. There's got, I don't think that, I think the coaching staff is too it's buddies with everybody. Rope. I think it's a big, but they just got up. Thing. They just got up. So I don't, I don't, and they just got up. I think you're going to see trades before you're going to see a coaching change. Sorry. Oh, you will because they just signed him. And plus, yeah. uh, yeah. what's his name there? Harry Potter, Dubas, <laughs> him, him and him and Keith are, uh, best buddies, right? They came up through the system together. So yeah. no, that's, that's not, well, they're both going to go then, aren't they? They're both going to go. They're both going to get canned then. That's yeah, I I think so. I don't plan. think I think Harry Potter's made some really really bad bad moves, starting with Nylander. I think. Uh, <laughs> hi, Lonnie. I don't know if anyone can uh, see that. I saw the chats working. We we heard rumblings. I heard rumblings that the restream chat was down and that it was going to have a hard time communicating with people today. But we see you, Lonnie. Hello, You're hello, right, Lonnie. Right and anybody else uh, yeah. that has a question today, uh, we will get to that uh, as we go through. We got a big big show today. Yeah, uh, we were going to do our Halloween cool. specials. We're coming up on Chris and I's one year birthday here yeah. on this thing. Hello. And and uh, we're going to talk scary movies and retro video games with a friend of mine named Matt uh, Pefe, who plays with Trifium. Great guy. Great guy. Uh, toured with this summer uh, with uh, Lamb of God and Megadeth. And uh, that was a blast with those guys in Hatebreed. So he agreed to come on and have a little chat today and talk retro video games, uh, horror movies, and their brand new album. Yeah, that cover so, of that album is stellar. Yeah, which you'll see here. Nice in a cover, so man. lots to get through then. Plus, we got a bunch yeah. of guys and girls from the uh Dean Blundell Network coming on to give us their favorite horror movies, including yeah. Ryan Lindley and his wife Ashley from the Sheeple Shepherd podcast. I believe we're gonna get Bonzi and we're actually gonna throw to Bonzi old school, old school uh WKRP TV style. Coming up next. Yeah, we got that. We got coming up next some, on the network. 
some voicemail to get through because some people have left us some voice messages, which is awesome. Uh, I believe we're also going to get Brad Hopper uh, from the off the uh, uh, offload delay podcast, branding podcast on the network. So, Hey, lots of people weighing in on their horror stuff. uh, Plus lots of fun to talk about for next week as well. Full show, man. Let's get some, uh, let's get some heavy metal into the mix here. What do you say? Mm. Let's get some metal going here. Okay. So we're going to welcome Matt to the equation here. Everybody hang out, have yourself a very good time. Enjoy this uh, chat that we're going to have here with Matt. It's pretty damn awesome and uh he's a great guy for coming on it's great uh, to have him on the show we're pretty stoked here man great band that's awesome stand by matt here we go rock on fancy little intro for a monday night live from machete Machete comics where chris is i'm at uh not machete comics i'm in a makeshift studio in cloverdale you're, British in, a, you're in a closet with you it looks, like, it looks like you're about to do stand up it looks like you're about yes, to stand up comedian place so got what's a few the jokes deal? what's the yeah. deal with <laughs> what's the deal got, with the brick wall man i got a few jokes you know and all the rest open, of it open it's, with a good one no i don't, actually don't have any i, I, I never known you, i've never known you for the be the joke guy the coffee guy no. but not the joke guy i'm, I'm not, not the joke guy. guy. i might be able to slide a one-liner in there every now and again i like zinging chris about his age Matt, it looks young though. Thanks buddy. Well, wait, you yeah. see my video game collection. Then you'd be like, Whoa, that dude's old. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what's up, man. This is Matt from Trivium, a good friend of mine that I toured a little bit with and uh, tried to caffeinate him and all the rest of it. Uh, he's so kind to come on this podcast uh, with us this week uh, as we talk retro video games and horror movies and all of our favorites as we come on the Halloween sort of uh season as you will and matt and i had some good chats out on the on the road about such things and uh and here he is man i really appreciate you making the time thank you so much yeah, man thanks so much for having me yeah like I was, I was saying before we went on air every time i see your face i'm always like oh it's time for good coffee so that's what i was mm-hmm. expecting because for all those of you listening and watching yes we just did an amazing tour my, my first tour with trivium in two years uh the tour was amazing it was five to ten thousand people a night we didn't miss one single show it was perfect and uh, the catering coffee was either bad to good Bad to medium, but Brent would always have the absolute best stuff. He'd show up in our dressing room like the freaking coffee angel and always make us feel good. So it's good to see you, man. I really appreciate being on here. Nice. Once you find out who the coffee people are out there, then <laughs> they all come together. It's like, I, for me now that I don't drink anymore, it's like the coffee people come to you and you're like, oh, you make coffee and all the rest of it. And it's just pretty fun. Willie, Willie from uh, Lamb of God came up to me on the la- almost the, the last show. And I didn't, you know, you and I were like, you know, you would see me making coffee. You're like, what, what are you making coffee there? Yeah, yeah. But Willie was never really around very much. Mm-hmm. And he came up to me, I think it was in uh, St. Louis. And he's like, are you the coffee guy? <laughs> and I said, yeah. He goes, you got to see what I got going on on my bus. And I'm like, why are we meeting with two shows left? Anyway, it was just a <laughs> yeah. funny kind of thing. But yeah, it brought everyone together. So we were out uh, around gallivanting around this fine country of ours. And you, my friend, have a brand new record out. Wow, look at that, that artwork, boy. man. I love that artwork. Thank you That's so beautiful. much. Who did that? Um, artist man named Matthew Nozea out of France. We gave him the concept, gave him the title, and that was his second uh, – the, the idea of that was the second draft. It took four months. It's completely hand-painted. Everything was done like the old masters used to do. My goal was to find someone as oh, good wow. as Caravaggio, which I knew was going to be impossible. But amazingly, I found someone who kind of is as good as Caravaggio. So, Dude, that's brilliant, man. That. That's that's really I don't I uh, have a comic uh, company, a small comic company in that piece of work. I love the old school, like you're mentioning. Love it. Love it. Yeah, love he's, it. He's he's amazing. He's amazing. We, he absolutely knocked it, knocked out of the park. And we've got that thing. Uh, the physical painting right now is still in the UK and we just need to ship it over to us. It was there for we did a beer event where basically that painting was there and three of our favorite bands played there while we were actually playing Mount Pleasant on the last run that we were on, but we also had a Birmingham UK event happening at the same time with that painting, three bands and a Trivium beer. We also did the same thing in Orlando just a couple of weeks ago, but it was actually the stunt version of the painting. So it, was, it wasn't the original. So people that thought it was the original, I hope they weren't too bummed out, but we still don't have the original yet. I can't wait to get it. Yeah, that'd be great. Is, is that something that you guys are conscious about as far as your, um, Branding's not the word I'm, I'm particularly looking for, but you've got a theme to the album. Is this something that you're very, very passionate about uh, and conscious about when it comes to designing out how you're going to come running out? Or does it come out of the theme of a, of a song that you wrote? And you're like, oh, that would be a great idea for a song, for an album title. And he, 
yeah, let's get somebody to commission. Let's commission somebody to do this. I mean, we put as much effort, time and effort and energy into everything that we do as the music. Like the, some bands kind of just focus on the music and the lyrics come secondary. Some get those two, maybe not the live show, but we make sure everything from our merchandise to our album art, to our lyrics, to the way we look on stage, to our production, to everything is thought out as intensely as the music. So this is this definitely shows how much thought and and energy we put in. We always have. Our album covers, I think, have all been pretty amazing. But it's been since, I would say, the In Waves record, our fourth album, that we really figured out the visuals of the band. I feel like we always had the album art, but maybe not the videos or the way we looked or et cetera, et cetera. But it was on the In Waves record in 2011 that every single record after that we had the new logo that matched the artwork that matched the merchandise that matched the website that matched the music videos and everything just went i feel like that's the best way to go about it um i want people when they're listening to our band they're stepping into a whole world it's not just listening to the music it's everything yep that's it's awesome. great that's good a lot, a lot of bands don't, don't artists don't do that these days i yes. love that they, they definitely don't yeah you could you could tell you'd be like man there's music's really good but damn what is that album cover or yeah huh these lyrics are awful but the music's pretty cool and we want to make sure everything everything hits its marks and that's because we you know i think a lot of stuff we're going to talk about here it's because we've been mm -hmm. fans of so many different things and we see how the presentation has to be completely right. thought out for everything awesome man we're live on your Twitch right now, everybody. Yes. And so uh, I don't think I've met anybody. Okay, I, I've mentioned this before, I think, in passing to other artists and all the rest of it. I don't believe that I've met an artist as busy and active on <laughs> Twitch as you, which taught me a lot. You guys were streaming the whole time we were we, we were we were out on tour and doing all the rest of it. But also, uh, you've really utilized it to to really help brand out the, yourself, but the band and all the rest of it. So you know, as we come through the podcast land and we're we're trying to find new avenues to get out and all the rest of it. I was always very impressed with your commitment to Twitch. Backstage, you know, you, we, we're used to seeing bands swing off the ropes and it's madness and there's all the rest mm -hmm. of it. Because of COVID, things have changed now and bands are kind of like, there's nobody backstage and guys are right. kind of occupying. So if Matt's not wrestling somebody in MMA fashion, he's <laughs> online. He's online all the time. I've never seen a band do nice. this Thanks, as man. trivia. So that Thank was you. very cool. It Thank does you. take yeah. dedication to do that. Like you'll say, oh, I can take care of all the, the online publicity. Don't, don't pay somebody to do that. And then day after day after day, man, it really takes some dedication, uh, profession, and, and to be a pro to, to do that. I know a lot of people think, oh, wow, you post stuff online. But no, nah, man, if you're going to do it consistently and get that vibe going online, which is where everybody is, man, it, it's tough. You got to stick with it and you got to be diligent with it for sure. Yep, it's a lot. You got to love it too. Like if yeah. my schedule is five days a week, two times a day off tour, and my schedule is seven days a week, one to four times on tour. And if you if I didn't love it, I think it would come through all those hours and it wouldn't be fun to watch. But I truly love right. it. I love everyone that's there. I look at uh, just as much as it's a source of entertainment for the people coming in, a source of connection and community it is for the viewers. It's also that for me as well. So if I have to do all these vocalizers, like Brent said, everyone's just backstage with their own bus and that's sort of it in last run. If I could be backstage and my vocal exercise ex very extensive, it's an hour long and it's very specific. Wow. If I have to be there doing that by myself, I would rather have several hundred people that I like being around talking to mm -hmm. me making me laugh while i do it nice yeah not only that but it takes a lot of balls to do a vocal warm-up in front of a <laughs> yeah. few hundred oh, yeah. people man when you're that's up all the time oozing the eyes and yeah the... my voice squeaked this morning it squeaked on other things and i just don't even care anymore <laughs> it used to make me nervous but now you know i think when you can show that that human side of it when it should mm. be shown I, I think that, that that side should not happen during our shows but in preparation right. it's okay like in preparation yeah. mistakes have to happen but shows they shouldn't now, uh, cool. to your Twitch feed, um, I want to get it. We're going to get into some retro video games with you because of how much you game. And I know you game a lot with um, Call of Duty and some of the other things. But Chris and I were going to do a retro video game kind of breakdown in chat. I was like, well, Matt would be great for this because this guy's playing it all the time. But what is the main thing that you cover on your Twitch feed when you're not touring? Okay, so the main thing, about 75 to 90% of the time is me playing music. It's generally 75 to 90% of the time me playing Trivium songs for Trivium supporters, especially with our new record just out. It's been a matter of me relearning it and playing these things. And now that we've got 10 records out, there's always a new set list I could do every single morning and or every single stream. That's essentially what I do. However, when I'm playing games, when I first started streaming, it was Fallout 4, then Overwatch, then Fortnite, then Valorant, back to Overwatch for a minute. Call of Duty pretty much nonstop. 
and I have just started playing Elder Scrolls Online. And Elder Scrolls Online, we were able to do an incredible collaboration with them. One of our music videos, they handed us hours upon hours of CGI footage from their new game that wow. we turned into a movie inside of our video. So our song, The Phalanx, all the storyline stuff is incredible CGI from the game. It's stuff that if we would have wanted to do that ourselves, it's like hundreds of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars just in there. So that that whole video was that I was able to cover one of the songs from the game because the game's all like medieval. So I took one of their bard songs, made a metal song, played that at their Elder Scrolls Online, the Bethesda year end event. I just finished another one. It's almost done. I'm gonna finish it once we're done with it. Once I'm done with two interviews today, uh, mm -hmm. and just do more and more like Elder Scrolls. I, I can't believe how obsessed I am with it. And it's weird playing a video game and not getting mad because I usually only play <laughs> against other people. I, I didn't think I'm a competitive person, but get, I guess maybe I am a little bit. I love to play shooting games against other human beings. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I, li I like to win. So this <laughs> game, it's just you just get to chill and enjoy the story and be in this, this ancient mythical world. And it's weird playing a game and just having fun and not being angry afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, some of those games can really frustrate you. Um, oh, yeah. Especially if you got the same boss over and over again and you start from the beginning of the level. But I was wondering, so I, I got a two-part question for you. So part one, what was the first video game that you can remember playing? And second question, or part B, would be what was the game that hooked you and was like, okay, I'm this isn't just a one, you know, once a week kind of thing. I'm playing video games. I love this game. So this, first game this, ever and game that hooked you. There's a picture of me at about four or five years old, and I'd have to ask my mom exactly what of me with the you just beat the game screen from the very first mario off nes so i've been nice. playing games since then right um i guess i've been hooked since then but i remember really going nuts over a game for remember when donkey kong country came out there was yeah. a documentary on it on tv i remember vhs recording and i'd watch it all the time in between playing it um that i guess the final fantasy games would have been when i really went full-blown there's a japanese term for it called otaku when it used mm -hmm. to be a derogatory term for like a nerd but now it's a positive term for like a super fan right so it was final fantasy 2 and 3 which were actually japanese 4 and 6 that i really went nuts over uh 7 6 and 4 are my favorite final fantasies of all time i collect nice. all of them i have every single game that's ever existed of final fantasy up until like 13 i have every single edition that's ever been released with nice. every strategy guide with the limited edition toys limited edition complete soft right? plush yeah. toys yeah everything so I'd, I'd play i'd sit with the games and with the strategy guide and finish them 100 percent i'd finish them the way you're supposed to finish them get all the best things you're supposed to get and uh yeah that's i was full blown so rpgs were my life for a long time then i started getting shooters through goldeneye goldeneye was one of the first shooters i really loved i love split screen playing goldeneye with my friends oh that's then, a yeah, that was like game. that was one of the best shooters of all time and i wish mm -hmm. i wish it was as popular Agreed. as counter-strike is right now um yeah then Call of Duty Modern Warfare was the one that really took over for me like once i got into that that's when mm -hmm. i started getting into like playing online don't mind the guy cutting the grass behind me, gentlemen, but it's God, fine. I me mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> somebody Oops. had to do it. I got yeah, Chris, rain. No, What do you got for us? Chris bro bro broke out some uh, retro games that uh, I think you're going to dig here, buddy. Oh, I got, so let's see. So, so here's one. This is uh, the gold Zelda. Yep. Ocarina? From, yeah. My, is that Ocarina? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Ocarina of Time. Yeah, there you yep, go there. Somebody, I, oh, I do have my glasses. Hang on a second. Yeah. See, I'm so, I, I mentioned I'm going to show my age while my video games come out in more ways than one. <laughs> and the other one here, uh, Link to the Past. I got this one yep. here as well. That was like one of the kind of originals. I guess the original original was NES, right? I yeah. think so. Oh, I never don't... played the, oh, the original original one. Oh, do, do you have this one, the gold version? Yes, I do. I do. Nice. I love that one. I love that yeah, one. That's like, that's like one of the Holy Grails of Zelda, right? Is that yes. gold... Uh, that gold one there and then of course uh oh man uh did you ever play metroid 2 i love super metroid super metroid so i mean yeah, sorry yeah i oh. loved i loved super metroid i was obsessed with the music game. the vibe everything and actually the metroid they released on um gamecube was pretty amazing i can't remember which one that was but there was something really like desolate and lonely and amazing about that one but super metroid was one of my favorites of all time like true favorites i love that game i can still hear the music in my head yeah sing it for us matt Kill sing us metroid <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to make a uh, metal version of it. There you go. That'd be yeah. cool. That's huge now, right? Because I um like having video games done by shredding though is like huge. Yeah. Now, now here's... And one, one of my goals in life is to score 
like score video games not just a song not just like it's like a one-off not a soundtrack but i want to fully do a game from beginning to end and i've been very like vocal about it the next doom like right now they don't have a composer for doom i want the doom soundtrack is what i want i could see that for sure i was going to say did you pick a game so doom is the one like if you could pick any game to do a soundtrack for would it that's be the doom? one that's the one i used to think final fantasy but like that's so yeah. orchestral like i want to do doom because it's like it's guitars so that's that's it did you do it all could you do it all at your house matt you gotta go I to could. the big studio. I, you I could. Oh yeah, I could wonder. I would track it all here, and I would have Josh Wilbur, the guy that does the trivia stuff, mix it. That's what I would do. That'd be awesome. Yeah, uh, you awesome. must have been asked before, though. You must have been asked before to do something, but uh, like some kind of video game. Yeah, we've been in a lot. It's you know? it's always been like a song for a game, or like the, the thing we did with ESO was huge. I mean, the having the collab thing, but I wanted like ground up like do every single piece of music you'll hear for an entire game i mean we've we've written a song for god of war uh we've been in the sims we've been in madden ufc like tons and tons of stuff tons of stuff in game tons of stuff not in game but the soundtrack with companion soundtrack but i want to fully do the game yeah you heard it here first you heard it here folks well maybe not first but you heard it here uh, on the kids on the escalator podcast if you're listening and you make doom yeah, well, that would be such a cool because they give you the storyline, right? And you're like, okay, you're writing for each level oh, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. That would That's be what a I really, want to do. That would able, be a fun game. I was dude. able to tell the creative director for Doom. I interviewed him on my on my channel. Oh, nice. And I was like, hey, I know you guys don't have a guy. If you're ever looking for a guy, just know I want to do it. He's <laughs> like, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> maybe he's already considering you then. That sounded positive. To I me. hope so. That sounded positive. I hope so. Nice. Yeah, I awesome. just want to show one more game. Have you ever heard of this game? I think I played that. Uh, was there an ET game for NES? Because if there was, I would have played that. Atari, I don't think I ever played Atari. That was just, no. just before my time. This is Eddie. apparently the worst game ever made. Well, right? it's, it's like, impossible to finish. Souls. You can't it, finish it. it. You can. No, you can. If you type in YouTube, there is a way to do it. Oh. It's just, yeah, it's nuts. Dude. That's how I, Super I, Ghouls I, and Ghosts are. Super Ghouls and Ghosts on, on SNES oh. is one of the hardest games in the world. I love Ghosts and Goblins, the original, man. I have that down here as well. So that's yeah. that's part two, I guess, to Ghosts and Goblins. I never played the original, but I played Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Okay. And anytime okay. I hear any of the music from Super Ghouls and Ghosts, I feel like the band Ghost sounds like Super Ghouls and Ghosts, but it uh, might just because the word Ghost is in it. That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, the, the old games are great. They're really no, they're good. fantastic. I, do, I, play, I play a lot of zombie games. I'm waiting for Dying Light uh, 2 to come out, and they keep pushing it back and pushing it back on me. I and loved really the Nazi zombies of Call of Duty Black Ops, the first one. Um, Derise was my favorite map. I loved that. And it's it's gotten too advanced for me now. I just really stick to either P, like PvP, like fighting other humans in, in shooting games. But yeah. I, I think I'm really gonna become a pretty obsessed with Elder Scrolls. I, I've really been into that lately. I could say that's a great game. It is. It's very good. Very addicting. Very addicting. What about horror movies? Should we switch um, gears movies. to horror movies? Yeah, yeah we're switch, asking me. Um, we'll switch to that. Yeah, because we're we're talking about it today. We're getting some contributions from the network that we're on. We got a lot of people in the network that want want to weigh in and some voicemails oh, today great, that, cool. are, that we're going to get to um but last year at this time this is basically chris and i's one year anniversary right around this time awesome. putting this show together and we actually launched out with our sort of retro you know kind of top five horror or sorry the, our favorite horror movies of all time but it's always a great conversation because people have their own kind of takes so um go ahead matt what do you what do you you sent me something i'm wondering yep. if this is it if this is yep. it here uh yes that's the one so i always you know when people talk horror they always think like zombies monsters splattering gore cool like that stuff's fine that's entertaining but i feel like old boy as far as like horror and being shocked and seeing something you've never been used to seeing and something that really hits you and makes you feel horrible i think there's something to be said about horror in that sense mm -hmm. uh, i was the artist that actually did ascendancy he started telling me about korean directors back then now and now we can see the, the huge eruption and explosion of korean stuff being mainstream look at squid games Squid games like the most popular tv show of all time but it's a korean show and the great korean stuff usually is the most unique and it's usually the most the stuff that will stick with you forever like sure dead alive's fun the chainsaw like the lawnmower killing zombies is fun but old boy if you want true horror something that just makes you feel down to your to your bones and your soul old boy is one of the greatest things ever I, I i've never seen the remake i not to be a jerk but i would just tell people to not watch the remake and just watch the original because the original is perfect i don't know why they re redid it i think they need to stop redoing so many great movies but that is one of the greatest ones and i do believe that old boy is the film that opened up the doors for korean films being popular mainstream and popular outside of the world um chanwook park i'm not sure i'd have to look it up if chanwook park did parasite 
Uh, I'm, I think it's it's possible. I'm going to look it up right now. I think that sounds right. Mm-hmm. What is it about Old Boy, Matt? That is it's so not. It's cre- Bong, Bong Joon Ho. Sorry. Uh, what is it about Old Boy? It's so creepy that you're just like it's going to freak you out. You just have to see it. You, okay. you have to, if you haven't seen it, yet, you got to watch from start to finish. Watch it with no distractions. And the Korean films are unlike anything that exists. I feel like there's so many things where you it's similar tropes they walk into, you know, the same similar backstories or similar kind of killers, similar kinds of deaths or arcs. But the way the Korean films do it is unlike anything else. Same thing, just watching the first episode of Squid Game, like, oh, that is not where I expect to go. And there's always a deeper message within it as well, which I love. It's not just for the sake of that. So the fact that like it sticks with you in so many levels and you can really peel away and investigate all these different things. I mean, Parasite isn't as much like horror. I don't know, maybe not horror at all, but it's something that really sticks with you as well from different different Korean director. But but Old Boy is one that you're not gonna feel good after you watch that. <laughs> you're not gonna feel good. <laughs> Not sure the mission. Are. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't yeah. Yep. Is to become. Yes. In any, I don't. I think. I, I don't think the. I think the thing I haven't comfortable is the Exorcist. Honestly. I mean, oh, the, the Exorcist. Saw, yeah, the, the original saw Exorcist. Bit, yeah, saw got a little ugly. It was uncomfortable just because be there with. But, you know that was uncomfortable. <laughs> like they had to find new ways to like torture someone and i guess that's you know that's that, that's a whole thing which some debate whether that's horror some think it's just kind yeah, of shock yeah like like that stuff versus... it's fun for a bit yeah like i agree like I've, I've i've watched all the saws but the new one it's been a long time i started the new one on the plane on the plane home from tour i saw there's a pregnant woman kind of like back adjacent for me so I was like you know what <laughs> i just turned it off and i watched a quiet place too instead because i was like i don't want to make her feel like nauseous because that was nice yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah i really that, that's how empathetic i am um but yeah i mean I, I feel like anytime it's something grisly or gritty or makes you scared or freaked out it, it is horror it's a pretty i think what i'm picking is kind of maybe wouldn't be classified as horror typically but i think there is something about that when it when it really taps into your mind um and i remember paula was the one that got me in a horror stuff show me what else it can be like the witch the witch mm-hmm. isn't like a splatter, isn't a monster thing necessarily, but it's terrifying. Same thing with Hereditary. Hereditary is so yeah. different about the idea of a horror film. And I really like that. Like, I feel like there's a time and a place for the gore stuff. I'm not huge into the torture stuff. Like, I, I think it's it's fine. It's not that it grosses me out. I just think I, I, I want it presented differently. There's a time and a place. But if you want to pick like true, like, all right, what can I watch in Halloween that hits all the boxes for horror? The Dawn of the Dead, the Dawn of the Dead remake that came out in like the 2000s, I thought was yeah. one of the best things ever because it was so entertaining. It was fantastically done and it was it was fun and it was intense. So that one would be the one if, if you want like just a pure, all right, this is a horror film. But Old Boy is one. And I, I felt, uh, it was, I, I'm not sure, it might be, the director who did Parasite, who did um, Okja, but Okja is one of the most depressing things I've ever seen in my entire life. It's Okja, a Korean film. Yeah, it that one's just soul crushing to watch. <laughs> uh, that was Bong Joon Ho as well, same director. He they just do things that just hurt. It, it hurts your mind. It's not even that it's like graphic or brutal. It just speaks down to a level of your soul that makes you think in your life. So yeah. Yeah, so this is the Korean stuff. I think we all have some learning to do. We got some learning yeah. to do when it comes to that side of it, because uh, I yep. think people, you know, I think it's getting more creative now, though. I, I, it really I, is. I think it's getting more creative where, where people are pushing the buttons now and trying to out change the genre. Yeah, right. I think there's a genre change that's happening. There's, there's not a lot of like Stan, there's not a lot of Stanley Kubrick's left in the world type people, you know, who examine mm-hmm. scenes and stuff. Hopefully, they'll, as you're mentioning about the uh, remakes, I've had enough remakes, man. Yeah, let's get some yeah. some new creators out there and get some something fresh, something different, like you're saying. No more I origin totally stories, no more yeah, remakes, right? no more reboots. Stop it. Just come up with yeah. something new. But I feel like that that's Korea. Korea's been doing that for us, and I'm so obsessed mm-hmm. with all those Korean films. And Old Boy is part of the Vengeance trilogy. It's actually the second film of a three part. It's not really related. It's just the theme is Vengeance. Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, which is just as heartbreaking and terrible and intense and amazing to watch. Then Old Boy, then Lady Vengeance. Um, Old Boy is the best of the three, but those those all go together. And if anyone has been in the Parasite or any of those, that they're they're going to be really into it. But Squid Game was fantastic too, uh, absolutely fantastic. It is as good as all the hype said. I, I feel like Korea is just nailing it for the the intensity. You think people though people are are. Uh... It's still hard to program people to follow subtitles and 
all the rest yeah, of it. it it's is. really it's really people just don't like it it is uh, it, it's funny know, we've gotten don't like it so into it because of having kids so we yeah. couldn't have the tv loud and i'm like i can't understand what the hell anyone's saying yeah. so we just started turning on english subtitles for for english shows and now watching stuff the subtitle is is absolutely no issue to me like it feels so normal like we watch everything with subtitles even seinfeld mm -hmm. at night with with subtitles <laughs> so it's once you get used to it, it it's it's pretty good yeah, I'm the awesome, same way. Man. I, 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 that's because I was again, I was like, I can't hear it that well, or something else is going on. The cats yep. are doing whatever. But I always have subtitles on. I'm hooked on it. Plus, yep. if I find you, you catch little things in some of the movies where they're whispering, or and, you, and yep. oh, that's what he said there. And sometimes it's mm -hmm. key moments, right? And uh, absolutely, if you're really into the movie, like The Shining, man, I can't watch The Shining without that on there. I'm always looking for something new <laughs> that somebody said or whatever, right? Uh, yeah, awesome stuff. I totally yeah, agree. Such, such a great way to go about it. Yeah. Um, what else did Paula show me? So, Hereditary, The Witch. Uh, Babadook, he kind of considered in that like new school of horror where it almost doesn't even have to show gore and it's still pretty terrifying, which I, I thought that's, that's a really fun, it's a really fun spin on horror. Mm. I think it's an interesting way. And it's not because like, I don't want the gore, gore the gore is fine, but I, I want, after seeing so much, it needs to really hit you differently. Time and a place, right? It should at least help the storyline a bit, whatever, you Absolutely. know, like, yeah. Absolutely. Matt, you got a new record out and uh, it's fantastic. Thank and, you so much, um, man. That must have been a labor to do over um, the COVID times that we're in and all the rest of it. Now that it's out, it's like releasing your baby to the world. How are you feeling it's a couple of weeks after post-release? Um, I think you mentioned to me on tour that, you know, your first, I think the new single was doing the best of anything you've ever done, uh, which is awesome. So how are you feeling uh, post-tour, post-record release, all the rest of it? It's crazy. Um, this record, I don't want to take anything away from it. It was so incredibly easy to write and so incredibly easy to track. It only took us 14 days to track the whole thing because we just came in. Like I, as, as much as you saw me doing the warm-ups and the, and the practice and stuff, my guys do the same. All four of us yeah. are as intense yeah. with practice and rehearsals. I am. They're, they're just a little quieter about it. Like they don't, they don't stream it. So you kind of don't know. Um, but this record was effortless to make we didn't plan on making an album we just captured lightning in a bottle that started coming out we were feeling good we all just moved down uh we had the full band finally living in florida together we bought the airplane hangar together life was feeling good and we just started making music um i think i've mentioned you brent but how trivium has always been just purely held up by our fans and we've never really been a band that press or other bands have talked about what's crazy about this new record it totally flipped that on its head now every single freaking press outlet is talking about how this is very well one of the best trivium if not the best trivium records ever and that's not something you hear often on record 10 that people say hey this new record record 10 is possibly the best thing they've ever done <laughs> it's usually people talk about one two or three or four something early like i like the old stuff but now record 10 is the one that people are all agreeing on that this very well could be the best record and i i agree it's it's so fun to play it's so fun to listen to we're so incredibly proud of it we love it and things are just going really really well for it it's awesome, man. You got a great band. Yeah. All the guys are awesome. They're monster players. And uh, it was a real pleasure um, watching you every Thank single you. day. It was an awesome uh, tour with you, man. Thanks so much for everything I... you did on the last tour. I really appreciate you. Well, coffee all the way, right? So, <laughs> Matt, uh, let's, uh, I know people can find you, you know, <laughs> online because you're on every platform, even the ones not invented yet. But uh, give us a little, <laughs> give us a little rundown of, uh, of uh, where we can point everybody to find you. Yep, twitch.tv slash Matthew K. Hafey is basically where I'm at five days a week. At Matthew K. Hafey on Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Discord. I'm on all of those at Matthew K. Hafey. I was able to, I luckily secured that branding across the board. So it's on everything. So if you're just on TikTok, I'm on there. If you're just on Twitch, I'm on there. But Twitch is the main one to pay attention to. Matthew K. Hafey, you can also, MatthewKHafey.com is also a link to everything. And that's where you can find everything that I do. Awesome, buddy. Are you going to uh, also uh, secure your same uh, uh, handles on the new Trump social media network? As well? <laughs> Already got it. Already got it. <laughs> Already got it. That's where I'll be live streaming 100% of the time now. Awesome, man. Matt, thank you, man, awesome. for joining awesome. us. Thank Kids you so on the much Escalator yeah, podcast. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Best guys. Best luck Absolute with the new pleasure, album, friends. everything. So much, dudes. You guys take come, care. Come back anytime. And this is a little okay. highlight for you, Matt, oh, from, we, that we captured uh, at this is cool. Slipknot Together. Uh, in, as Iowa in the middle awesome. of the field, uh, this hanging out. Great. And this is what uh, Trivium and Matt do best. That's uh, Matt uh, Hafey, everybody uh, from Trivium. Brand new record. Awesome, dude. Check this awesome. out. Thanks, Matt. Thank you so much, my friends. Oh, yo, get the fuck out!
That's stage two. Let's all fucking party together. Come on, get the fuck down. All you on the back, get the fuck down. I know you know how to do this shit. We ain't coming back up till this motherfucker kicks in. When this motherfucker kicks in, it's two words in waves. Top of your lungs. I see you standing. Come on, get down, get down, get down. Now fast. When this shit kicks in, everything you fucking got. And just like that, we're back. How about that there, Chris? It's great. Nice see you there. I like Where that. are you? I'm right here. Yeah. Hello. Okay, let me get back to du dual screen here. What's going Hello. on? How come I'm isolated? What the hell is happening? This new tech. Hello. Jesus. Hey. So Matt's a rad dude. That was really cool. Had a lot of people yeah. uh, commenting on that earlier that he was going to be on the show, and they are pretty stoked. Uh, Connor yeah, Longafee, awesome. my old, uh, one of my old students there. He's out there somewhere. Connor, if you're watching, cheers, buddy. Yeah, he was on there, and... Uh, Tim Gibson, uh, old friend of mine from Cesarea area. He was pretty stoked yeah. on that. Spike Ray, so, he was stoked on that. He touched on some really cool stuff, and the record's doing really great for them. And and uh, yeah. what I say about that uh, cover, man, that cover's smoking. Um, it was. Uh, just, just a nice record. guy, though, too, right? Like It's so mm. good to find that. Nice people who are having uh, good luck and good things done for them in the entertainment music industry, right? That's awesome. I like Making that. time for the little guys like us. You know, one year in, the guy gets asked all the time to do some stuff. But uh, Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Now, speaking of people who make time Keep for the little room. people, uh, we got a whole bunch of people in the waiting room. Now, nice. I'm going to add the I'm going to add the coolest person first because she was laughing the whole, and getting and totally down with every single thing that you were talking about with the video games with Matt and everything. Every single game that you brought out. Ashley Lindley here uh, oh, was cool. like this is like Hi, the Ashley. funniest. She was just rocking, and her better. I really under my entire childhood. Oh, yeah, cool. and, then, I, and then, that was just the tip of like all the video games I have. Actually, I have tons. And of her partner in crime, Ryan from the the Sheep right. Shepherd podcast on that. Ooh, I, what's I was, up, guys? I was gonna do hit and runs here, but I feel like doing the Brady Bunch window. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? There you, <laughs> go. you know, because there's so many people. We got Brad hanging out. We got a bunch That's of people kind of chilling. And look up and look over and all the rest of it. I looked the Anyways, wrong way. I was looking. Welcome to the show, my friends, and uh, let's bring Brad. Let's bring Brad in here too, uh, just for for fun. And Brad, there you are. Holy, how are you, buddy? Here too. Look at all these going people on, in here. Ashley, how are you? Good. Look at all these people in Good. here. Uh, Chris, I'm not gonna lie, oh, friends. I just gotta find the right window here. Hold New on. Studio. My heart rate, guys. Um, it's still exploding from the Slipknot clip because I remember the last time I was at a Slipknot show and I might have gotten kicked in the face and I wasn't oh. even in the pit. Um, <laughs> I was on the outside of the pit, so she's got a big mouth. That was very That's what intense. It is. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, she was at, like a, she was at like a burger. She was at like a Burger King near the show. That's where it happened. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> yeah, once no, they pull the cord actually, on those pits, man, you got to watch out. We actually had a. I feel like I felt very inadequate coming into the show today. So we had, um, we had a concert planned out front, but it rained. So we couldn't do it. Mm. So we're sorry. Oh, you're actually going to do a show for us. Yeah. We had like, we had thousands of people that were at the park across the road, but um, they, they didn't come because it rained. <laughs> oh, sorry. You're stuck with okay. us. Yeah. So this is Ryan Lindley, Cheap Chapter Hi. Podcast. This is his beautiful wife, Ashley. Hello. How are you? Laughed along. Fantastic. And the only person that showed any emotion during this whole thing with Chris with the video games. Literally, I have to reiterate that the, watching you in that window react to all of these games was the funniest <laughs> goddamn thing I've seen all year. And Brad Hopper from uh, the brand new uh, Offload Delay podcast on the Dean Bundell Network, uh, First Responders sure. podcast, along for the ride. Uh, how are you, sir? Good to see you, man. Doing well. Been busy. Awesome. It's been good. Just yeah, coming off Kingstonian, nights. Kingstonian there with Chris yeah, and everybody. So it's yeah, awesome. Fun, man. Yeah, buddy. We got to hook up sometime. Yes, definitely. <laughs> we have yeah, to hook yeah. up sometime. We can talk shop privately. Sounds good, my friend. Um, yeah, yeah, look forward to it. So guys uh, and girls and everybody, we are doing our annual sort of like scary movie-a-thon um, as we go through the, the process. And Chris and I had a had a whole uh, bit last year where we started our podcast, but in essence, 
uh, doing this one, we basically ran down sort of our favorite um, horror movies. So we did this as a as a bit of a hit and run. We like to have as many people from the network on. They kind of come on, talk a little bit about their favorite flick, and then kind of then promote your show. And then and away we go. And I think we got Bonzi coming on. We're going to throw to him because he's going to go live after us. And I think we got our uh, part time uh, host uh, Mike coming on here. A co-host We're going to get in the bike here. with Mike. I'm getting a bike with Mike as well, uh, who's in a car. So uh, let's go. Uh, <laughs> let's go, Brad. Let's go, Brad. Why don't you Why don't you uh, give us uh, the goods here, buddy, on your favorite uh, uh, horror movie Halloween kind of time frame? This was a toss up. I'm only going to throw the one name out, but um, my age is going to show here because I was fairly young, and it it um, it stuck with me even to this day as a guy that likes to go to the cottage go near a lake. Um, it's, it's the original Friday the 13th. It's pretty lame, but that, that <laughs> no, right I'm with you. was um, something that screwed with me a lot as a kid. Uh, I, I would not go to, ah, no, I'm pretty much over it now, but that sound <laughs> um, was, yeah, I could Don't. hear that. I didn't like going to the cottage at night. I didn't like going to the dock. I didn't like to be out in the, we had a canoe as well alone. So kind of remembered young Jason there and the, he died in the lake and it's all I could think about as a kid. And it, it truly stuck for years. So I, I have a hard time going to, uh, going to anything else, but that I heard Chris mention the shining and I, it was so close, but I got to go. Yeah, old that, school, my- 1980, 1980. Yeah. I had to look it up before I came on. Uh, yeah, I'm old. If I have glasses around here too, somewhere, Chris, but uh, <laughs> I love you. don't worry. I'm, I see, I'm the same with you. Like, my, my favorite two horror movies are the originals, the uh, the Halloween one and Friday the 13th. The first, like, those are just like just my go to movies when it comes to that. Rob Zombie didn't do too bad of a job, I thought, with the remake of his half of his half one. Halloween two, he did. I he lost me there. I don't know what he was doing with that one, but. Um, but I love the classics, man. I don't like torture movies. I like the the stupid horror movies. Not so, like you know, like don't go in there. Nope, she's going in there. I love those ones. Another just just throw another one out is uh, Chopping Mall. If you get a chance, it's on Prime. Chopping right. Mall. It is cheesy eighties horror, and you will have a fun. You will laugh. You will laugh until you stop. It's it's just a great it's right a now. great name. What the, it's a hell yeah. of a it name for a, for a movie. Chopping Mall. What do they yeah, like that? that. Friday the 13th, would they do 12? Is that the final Oh, number? man, I don't know. I think there was 12 when I looked it up, which just surprised me. Why would they not do 13? Uh, yeah, but, no kidding. Right? Um, well, I maybe they're 12. holding out. That could be. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Ooh. I'll do a full life cycle on Friday the 13th movies here. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be a, a complete pack. I'm, no, I'm like, a fan. I think I liked, I, I liked 6 and 7 and those ones yeah. as well. They it's were, an age they thing, got, I think, That was the right? epitome of the, of the cheese when I got into the it, thir- if you watch third one, that's good. Right? Got his yeah, the third one as well. If and you look the at the yeah. Feldman era, man, the Corey yeah, Feldman era of four, uh, four and five, and it, right? It was so simple, man. It was a yeah. pair of coveralls and a mask, and that was it. No high end makeup, nothing. A couple young kids playing that's at the cottage, it. goofing around, mm-hmm. kids making out. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it takes me back. I'm glad you had me think about that's it. That's how we made this I podcast, buddy. It. Yeah, Cover it's exactly what it's a uh, mask. <laughs> <laughs> coveralls yeah. a little bit of blood um, some screaming now, ryan you mentioned that ashley's actually the, the 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 expert here so ashley why don't you give us a little uh little info here on what your favorite is i have a problem as you might be able to see from what's behind me here oh stephen king and i don't i don't own a lot of books that aren't written by stephen king and I, I could probably broaden my horizons a little bit, but I just love the guy. So, eh. and I, I know that The Shining isn't his favorite of, of everything that mm-hmm. he ever created. Um, it kind of pissed him right off, but I mean, it's still a really good movie. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not the book. Yeah. I get that it's not the book and you really can't compare the two, but if it doesn't freak you out, then there's something wrong with you. Yeah, just I think we all remember movie. the lady in the bathtub, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right, Absolutely. like if you were if you read that and you saw it and it was just like oh my god you can't you you'll never unsee it like it was that was terrifying to me, but it was a lot of the psychological stuff with Stephen King like he just gets inside your head and freaks you right out. Yeah, 
Yeah. You should come back and co-host uh, with Chris and do a deep dive into The Shining because he's dying to dive, dive, dive into The, oh, the I love Shining. It. I could watch The Shining on Christmas Day. You know what I mean? I just love The Shining. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, it's, it's you know what? It's winter. It's snowing. How is that not a Christmas movie? Yeah. It's an awesome He's movie. the shit out of those Hallmark movies. Yeah, you bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> it should be a holiday movie. <laughs> Why not? Ryan, what do you yeah. say, buddy? What do you say? Uh, I'm I, I'm so torn. I'm I'm kind of with I'm with Hopper when it comes to the 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 old classics because it brings me back to being a kid and being scared shitless on the couch. But <laughs> mine was always um, Nightmare on Elm Street, the Wes Craven stuff, mm -hmm. right? And nine, 1984, as uh, as it got a little, um, as I got a little older and a little more, you know wise to you know you, you outsmart the 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 scary movies so you don't piss yourself when you go to sleep um <laughs> the monster thing kind of went away and i got more into the the thriller aspect of things like the the the, the murderers and the the more realistic things that weren't yeah. so supernatural which is why i kind of strayed away from i used to be a big stephen king guy as well i like his books but i'm not huge on the sci-fi and he kind of went a little sci-fi weird on me mm. as of late so i don't think but he I'm, came back a little bit, a little bit. Like Mr. Mercedes and things like that now are really good. I love horror. I just don't. Well, I've started. We, horror, we've just started a new off. segment on this show. It's called Let's Start a Domestic. So here we go. We're going to have two of you uh, debate yeah. this. Yeah, you're going to debate oh. this. And let's see what you got. You two. Well, let me let me finish what my, my movies. Is this why we're in separate oh. rooms? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. So uh, I enjoyed uh, Insidious was another one. Uh, mm. Insidious series was really good. And The Ring. Anything that came out of uh, Japan or, or or Korea for horror was always, always good. Like, it's always just, it's horrible. It's terrible. It's like, how the fuck could you even put that on TV? <laughs> yeah. What are you thinking? It's so good, right? But those those are mine now. And... Yeah, that that like it's very you know childish, and I, I guess it's it's I don't know, it's not so sophisticated for somebody that's like a skeptic and doesn't you know doesn't like things that are pretend. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a little defensive on my horror movies. <laughs> what was what was the one that we ended up falling over laughing at the end of? That was um, Insidious. Wasn't it? Wasn't it no, like Insidious no. 2 or something? I thought it was like the second one of those. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, that was a good time. Yeah. We were the only people, the only people at the drive in that were just like absolutely. So this is a very, very, <laughs> it's a very insider um, uh, topic. So we'll just keep going with your Stephen King, how wrong you are about him. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? See, this is what people pay to watch. Mm. So. The reason why Ashley's locked in the garage is because her opinions on horror movies are horrible. And uh, she can stay there with her um, Stephen King books. And uh... <laughs> Wait, I didn't bring the new one. That's not fair. That's right. I got the new one. I got the new one upstairs. Yeah, I got the, I got the, well, I got the one. Brent, five Brent can read stories. it to you. It'll be nice. Yeah, I tried it. Yeah. It's all <sighs> good. As long um, as somebody reads me stories, I'm okay being locked about, in the garage. One, what one about, big if you had to pick like, if you had to pick like one, like if you had to pick like, like a talk, cause you guys seem a little more um, like you've been doing this and you've got, you've got uh, watching you guys dissect things like this mm -hmm. is amazing. So if you had to pick one, if there was only one movie left that you could watch every Halloween, which one would it be? Good question, Chris, go for it. I've got well, mine. I, uh, it would be Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Halloween one with Michael Myers. Jamie Lee classic. Curtis, baby. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And that girl says totally all the time, right? Yes. <laughs> totally. Totally. Yeah, that's totally my pick right there. Yeah, that would be it. Nice. That would be it. What about Brad, you, Brad? what do you think, buddy? Okay, fine. Well, go ahead, host the show. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. This is, uh, <laughs> Whoa. I have to stick with my original pick. Part one, Friday the 13th. Nice. Nice. I, st I still have the hockey mask somewhere, so I got to be able to use it every year. If I'm not oh, watching cool. the movie. Yeah. That's the other thing I want to bring up. When Ryan mentioned um, Freddy Krueger, and then Chris mentions Halloween and Michael Myers, those were costumes for like a decade when I was growing up as a kid. Those fake claws from Freddy, 
the 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 rubber mask where they were suffocating with the Freddy face scars, the yeah. hockey mask of uh, Jason, and then Mike Myers had that white plasticky face, and I can still pick picture it like those things stood the test of time year after year it's probably coming out with episodes every year but i really remember seeing those costumes a lot more now or then than you do now as far as i'm aware of movie-based halloween costumes they seem to dominate halloween one of the things that we uh one of the things that we did here is voicemail so i'm going to throw a voicemail into the mix we can discuss i think believe this is from jen shafaro i believe Mm -hmm. our team stand by from uh the team. Let me just see where it's going to come in here. Here we go. Jen. Hey there. Be able to hear. It's Shoot with Authority, aka Jennifer Shafro. Um, tagged on a tweet to talk about my favorite horror movie, and within one minute, which is most definitely not enough time. Um, I think horror movies are that genre is my favorite. Um, and I think the scarier ones for me are the ones that are more believable so you know like hauntings or possessions um uh what's the movie the exorcist probably did the biggest number on me um but i still watch it 100 million times over but stuff like i don't know vampires and well werewolves well granted i mean it could be real i mean everything comes from somewhere but um i don't i don't find that as scary except for in twilight's case where the acting was just it was terrifying. Um, but really, and it's probably not a horror movie, but Jaws. Jaws ruined my life. Oddly enough, I became a San Jose Sharks hockey fan for uh, quite a few years. But yeah, that's about it. Well, that's nice. Yeah, well, if it plays with horror tricks on your mind, it's a horror movie. Right? Yeah, that's I guess the new so. feature. Yeah. New feature we got there uh, called uh, It's All About to Voicemail. And people can leave voicemail for us over at. Uh, at uh, uh, kids on the escalator.com. So that's kind of rad. Neat. Be able to do that. So yeah, that was cool. That's good comment. I liked it. Good comment. Good comment. Uh, I'm an exorcist guy myself. So yeah, it's good uh, for me, I could watch that count over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And yeah. like Chris likes to find the little, the little bits in there. No, you're saying no. What that part with the part where she's sitting on the chair like this and he's talking, it's like I'm speaking to the person inside Regan right now. Yeah. And she's like, he's, she's not cool. here. I'm like, that was it for me. And I think my kids are around 12, yeah, 13 and 11 now. They're right around the same time that I watched Exorcist for the first time. And yeah. Well, you better sit them down and have them watch it. <laughs> Sounds like a rite of passage time. Yeah. Thinking I should fast yeah. forward over the crucifix part, I'm guessing. You, you know, probably a good stuff. idea. Yeah. Uh, everybody, awesome to have you guys on here. Brad, let's go to you, man. And yeah, uh, you. you just worked at, I don't know, 48 hours in a row. So tell us everything about we need to know about uh, offload and all that fun stuff. Yes, go. please. Offload delay has been uh, rolling now. We've got two whole podcasts on the network. It's uh, offload delay is the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. We're on uh, Apple podcast and Spotify so far for whatever reason. Amazon and iHeartRadio dragged their feet a bit getting us uh, approved. But we had some really good success. I think we got 50 subscribers right off that first pod on YouTube and I'm pretty happy awesome. with that. And I think there's been 900 ish views. Uh, had a really You're good guest left the out man. there. A lot of people watched it. A lot of people have been watching that. It's great. There's a lot better stuff coming up. I'm trying to get them out every week. I got one coming out Thursday. Um, nice. I'd like to do every single week the same day but i'm a shift worker i can't do it mm-hmm. my schedule yeah. is all over the place so it's just yeah. part of the the niche if you will yep. so i look into our world what we deal with the real stuff we deal with and kind of a fly on the wall view for everyone else who wonders what we do in our first responder world got some really really great guests coming some surprising stuff some stuff that's really quite emotional quite sad and uh real but a lot of funny stuff too so hopefully you can check it out and we'll keep rolling going to do our best we're going to be live i think we're going to we're going to really try and get live i'm finding if i'm doing a re- recording anyway i'm like ah, probably should have just went live with this i'd like to interact with some people especially when i bring some guests back who have already been on i've already had some people reach out about my last pod so look forward to it you guys have been great too everyone on this pod we're watching tonight has been super supportive and i i can't thank you enough as well as dean's whole team so Kudos, cool. kudos to you guys. You guys you're are. Some, uh, you're getting some trash here too. You're getting trash talked a little bit by Wade. Wade's giving it to you, buddy. <laughs> but that's Wade calling God, someone there old. You go. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just like water off a duck's back. Yeah. That one. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's all good. 
Yeah, appreciate it, guys. It's uh, you've been a lot of help. Great, great bunch. Part great of the, show. part of the part of the no kidding. fun and the reward of this has been meeting all the other kind of common interesters out there in the podcast world, and it's new to me. Very new. I I didn't plan on it. I didn't see it coming, and it kind of was an opportunity I couldn't pass. So I look forward to working with each and every one. I hope you're all going to be on it one day. Isn't that what we do? Yeah, Isn't that what we do. Yeah. We kind of bring yeah. you this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I may yeah, have actually. seen Ryan on a few. Yeah. I'm Ryan Friday, six Friday of them today. Yeah, Ryan's I was nice. working, and every time I turned the pod on Friday from work, it was like, "Is, is this skipping or what's going on?" But well, I, I see on again. On. Yeah, but a few more beers in each time, so I knew it was a, it was real time. So, <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, it was always live. Appreciate it. I uh, Thanks, is bon- Bonzi coming on? Well, he's going to go on next. He's going on next uh, after yeah, us, actually, on the network. Him. But I yeah. haven't seen him yet. He's probably got no power on the bus, so we'll he didn't see. think you said horror movies. <laughs> He's oh, out. Horror 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 movie. Movie. Yeah, he says, no, I'm out. Yeah, I'm done. So, we had to pivot. We had to pivot real well, fast. We, he's, doing we could, he's probably a fan of Jaws than the other. Probably a fan of yeah. Jaws, though. I hear you. <laughs> movie, so. I got you. Thanks, Hops. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks. We'll chat, chat soon. All right. Thanks, man. Easy, Bradley. Yeah. All right. You too. Great show uh, you've got, man. Yeah, Great it's show. really, it's really, really good. And, um, I was uh, li- I was listening to it the other day, and I was t- telling him I'm like, you know, not that we're getting into the horror details per se, but uh, they, they were going into like some stuff that they were talking about uh, coming up on a scene, and I'm like, yeah, I wish they would have went a little further. Hear the nose story. The, the nose, nose, yeah, I heard the nose story. <laughs> the nose story. Yeah, yeah, that's quite quite something. Uh, and that's the that's the content you're let's leave it at that, Ryan, because we're gonna yeah. go and look Jeez. at that. It's like, if you want the nose story, go to Hop's uh, offload delay podcast and listen to the nose story. And I'm sure he'll follow yeah. it up with an ass story and an ear story <laughs> and an eye story and a whole bunch of different stories. We'll see. It's we'll not his fault. That. No, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, and anyways, guys, uh, uh, Ryan, Ashley, you guys uh, are really rocking too with your pod. So let's uh, tell us all about it. Tell us all about it. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty crazy. <sighs> yeah, we um, um, we don't like stupid people. <laughs> really, ahead, dear, I like I like hearing it from you. This is nice. Tell um, them how much how much we rock. Oh, oh, we're we're just the top of the top. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what? It was one of those things where when it got started, we don't even know where it was going. It was just like, you know what? We were we were stuck in the house for so long and we were bitching about COVID just like back and forth and back and forth. And it was just like, there's nobody else to talk to about this. So be- before, you know, shit escalated and got domestic eventually, we were like, let's get some other people in and everybody else can hear us bitch about what's stupid, what grinds our gears. And <laughs> we'll get a little bit of feedback from outside. And then it's like, oh, OK, you know what? Other people feel this way, and it's nice to know that you're you're not alone, and you're not surrounded by like anti-vax insanity every time you open social media, and that's all you see. It's like, oh, cool. So we we landed on a network with a bunch of normal people, and it was like, oh, all right, let's keep pumping them out. Cool. Oh, yeah, we cool. did. Uh, we did. We 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 came up with a concept of of we wanted to debunk bullshit that you you hear about on the internet so we were talking about let's do q and on and 9 11 conspiracy bullshit and jfk blah blah we've never left covid very much, far from yeah. covid <laughs> just because there's just too much to do mm-hmm. so um yeah and then uh, i ended up uh, in a twitter fight with somebody uh and no dean, not you <laughs> dean was uh dean was involved this is before uh we we came on board and dean and i mm-hmm. kind of went through and liked each other's respective tweets and said, Hey, good job. Fuck that guy. And <laughs> shot me a DM. He says, Oh, you got a podcast. I said, yeah. He goes, I'm going to listen to it tonight. I'll message you tomorrow. And here we are. Nice. So we did, uh, yeah. It was really good. Yeah. It happened really We're fast. Part of the family and, uh, get to spend a lot of time on the, uh, on the main show now, which is really nice. It's a lot of fun. That's mm-hmm. a really good crew of guys to be with, but need to spend a little more time focusing on our show as well at the same time but yeah, there's only so sure. many hours in a day yeah. so what you're yeah. doing is cool like, so as, as long as there's something on the channel i'm happy nice. yeah it's been fun a lot yeah, of fun try to have a lot of people on the show or on the network and try to support everybody as well so everyone yes, check out the yeah. ryan and ashley and the sheeple shepherd podcast and mm. uh, on the demo Nell network come back anytime talk horror talk love you guys thank you so stuff. much and uh cheers friends awesome guys
We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for having us. For sure. So, I see Bonzi below. So we're going to wrap this thing up here and go to him. We're going to go to him because he's going to go live with next and all the rest of this. We've got a couple things that we've got to do before we get out of here. Number one. Okay. Wait, Kim, Kim's been patiently waiting. Uh, Mm -hmm. Christine, there we go. Kim. uh, I love uh, Christine. Amazing movie. Freaky Kim checks in every week. So thank you, Kim for that. Uh, And graphic wise, uh, I got to go to here because Chris Machete, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, Skeletron issue one and yes. two. Of course, issue two Chris, still uh, available. There it is. That's still available. Issue one sold out. Issue two is available. There's a there's a, maybe twenty left, something like that. I don't know. We sold a few this week. Issue and, uh, three is on its way. We have a big uh, new uh, new character wrestler El Terrifico. If you get issue El two, you'll see uh, a, a little flash of him at the end of issue two. Then he's going to be the star of issue three. Um, I don't even think Skeletron's in issue three per se. I think, I think, I think. Oh, Kim got her issue two today. Kim, I'm glad. Thank you for the support, Kim. That's right. Yeah, Kim bought issue two off us. So there you go. Perfect. And Kim got hers today. Thank you for your support, Kim. I really appreciate that. So she will know on the very last page, there's a shot of El Terrifico. And he is the next big villain. Yeah. So yeah, so, and, and uh, she, I believe she bought hers off of our Etsy store. So there you go. Etsy's, it works on Etsy. If you go to Etsy. Machete Comics, one word, you'll get that. Or if you just drop us an email, we'll hook you up. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. So uh, we got to do two hits before we go to Bonds here. Where did Mike? I just saw Mike in there. I just saw Mike in there. Maybe he wasn't in there. Bonzi. What's happening, man? What's going on? Can you hear us, buddy? I can can hear you. Technology on the button. There you go. I can hear you, buddy. There you go. Yeah. And there's a technology on the bus. It is I'm and a little lean. Sadly, I have to say, I lost right now. I've had it with people, but I had to cancel. Them. I was supposed to switch Verizon today, and I apologize for the <laughs> shitty feed, but we were unable to get the box from Verizon today. And so I borrowed my neighbors, and sadly, it's, it's out of data. So we're running off rv wi-fi right now folks until tomorrow oh. when i, I it, it's it's bad so i apologize uh it looks like it's doing okay right now but uh, uh it's been fun I, I i was watching behind the scenes there and and before and uh chris nice to meet you. i don't even have ever even uh talk no it's good before, to see so. you buddy good yeah, to share a screen with you my friend in, uh, I don't yeah. think people yeah, understand that yeah. Chris Machete designed the Bonzi logo with yeah. Bonzi and it's fun with Bonzi that's there. A, so cool we're just like when you one. see Bonzi going down the road, that's a, that's a Machete Bonzi uh, collaboration. Machete yeah. comics flying now, Bonzi, you left us a voicemail uh, about your favorite uh, movie. So let's go to you before we throw to your show, because yeah, uh, you know, and let's. Uh, okay. What do you got, man? What do you got for horror? And we're talking horror, not horror movies. I, I <laughs> caught that earlier. What Ryan thought maybe you'd come out here with like Jaws, the horror. Uh, so what do you got, my man? What do you got? Debbie does Jaws, and, and I you have a Jaws shirt on tonight. Uh, nice. I don't know. If Look at that. The whole show, but um, uh, honorable mentions to Jaws because I've been terrified of the ocean ever since. Uh, but mm-hmm. my favorite uh, movie, Halloween movies of all time, and the scariest movies is, is uh, I'm on board with Chris. It's it's Halloween. Uh, yeah. I've, I've been fascinated them by them ever since 1978 when the first one came out, mm-hmm. and you heard that music. To this day, that music box shivers up my spine, dude. And yeah, yeah. seeing Michael pop out and the um, you, you know everything. It's been uh, it's been wild. So over to my upper microphone here there we go. um it, it's just there's no better movie it scares the shit out of me i all of them are yeah. great it's at number three number three wasn't a part of the the uh series reason it kind of got off track and it, it doesn't mm-hmm. fit in with, with the whole series but the rest of them and, and even the rob zombie ones I don't know, the second one i heard chris mention but uh mm-hmm. all fantastic I, and i haven't seen the new one yet but i'm going in the next few days with my son who lives in la so i'm going to take a trip down there and we're going to go check it out beautiful That's where i'm at nice bonzi yeah. you're up next on the network what's yeah, uh what's buddy. on your show what's on your show talk about what's yes. going on and then we'll let you get out of here and uh 
and all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, so we've got a great guest, Dylan Matina. He's an actor in Hollywood. Um, went from an accountant in Buffalo, New York, the armpit of America. And uh, he's been in the Hollywood scene for about eight years now. And he is going to be a guest on the show tonight. We're going to talk the Alec Baldwin shooting and, and the oh. protocols and stuff of, of how it should be, what happened, what he thinks happened. And so we're going to delve right into that and, uh, and talk the latest uh, up-to-date news of what's going on with that shooting and everything. So interesting uh, interesting we'll be live it, about two minutes and and he'll be on uh, not long after that about five minutes after i'll just do my intro and boom i'll bring him on and we'll jump right into it well we won't That's go so too cool. much longer buddy we had a bit a bit, busy great. episode with uh, lots of stuff thanks for jumping on and uh yeah we're gonna, buddy. Do, this old yeah. School, we're gonna do this old school style everyone head over to bonzi live right now and check him out on youtube <laughs> and uh and check right? him out on youtube and where else where else can they see it bonzi because you're not on i don't i think we run it on twitter don't we on the dean Blundell network yeah uh you can find it on yeah. twitter youtube um it doesn't run on twitch anymore twitch went to twitter so you can find me on my youtube channel tripping with bonzi um on youtube the dean Blundell network yeah. and then oh, i'm on all the social media at bonzi live chris i, awesome, I gotta man. thank you again Beautiful. Dude, it's oh, no amazing. Problem, then no I, problem. my manager had a, a friend animate his friend animate it, and it's my new and and I I love it, dude. So it's again for best. designing one of the coolest logos I've ever seen. I love it. Thanks, pal. No, thank you so much, man. The best of luck to you, Bonzi. Wicked, man. Wicked. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Have for a good show, on. buddy. Yeah. Have yeah. a good show, man. Take care. See you, man. Cheers, my Bye. friend. Thanks. All right, yeah, there we go. That was a show, buddy. That was a show that was and a half. Good one. Huge awesome. thanks, around uh, an hour to, here. huge thanks to Matt uh, from Trivium for for uh, yep. coming on board and uh, showing us um, uh, his studio and talking about the record and video game talk with you and and uh, horror movies and stuff. So huge thanks to them. Check out their brand new album as well uh, out mm -hmm. there as well. Make sure to check out that, the yeah. and, latest uh, issue off, of Skeletron. Offload delay is uh, wants with to Brad. Yep. With, yeah, that's Brad. Oh, that's Brad. Okay, cool. Yes, that's definitely. Brad, definitely. Yes, delay. definitely. Yep. Yeah. Uh, huge yes. thanks to Ryan and Ashley from uh, Sheeple Shepherd for coming on. Thanks for hello, uh, coming on. Yeah, no problem. Anytime, uh, Brad. Uh, congrats on the on the show and and thanks for coming on. And this is what we do here. It's family time on yep. the show, and it's the uh, Kids on the Escalator podcast. Uh, one more thank you to our friends at Blue Microphones. We'll get out of here. Oh, geez. Wow. So Toronto lost that one, huh? Anyway. So That's been the Kids on the Escalator here. podcast for a Monday night, and we got a big show next week. We're not going to let Boom. it come out of the bag until later on in the week, but let's just like say. today wasn't a big one, man. Like today wasn't a big one. This we was a tonight. big one, and next week's going to be a big one. I can just tell you this. It's going to involve wrestling. It's going to involve someone that was involved in wrestling. In the 80s and 90s, we played an integral, integral role in wrestling. Hulk Hogan. And it's not Hulk Hogan because we don't invite racist bastards on the show. Take so there that, you go. Hulk Hogan. That's the Kids on the Escalator podcast for a Monday night. Go check out Bonzi Live right now. Uh, we Good. are live Good. from the house of Machete Comics, everybody. <laughs>